testimonies. For all the wonderful testimonies that have gone forth, I give God praise and glory. I, I, I am touched by all of them and by the way God has been working with greater light. That makes my heart feel good. I am especially grateful for your testimony, Sister Tracy, because God has purpose for your life. And sometimes it might not happen when we expect it or when we want it. But if we just stay faithful to him, if he plans to use us, it's going to be. Amen. You can take that from me. Amen. I hope and pray that Everyone had a wonderful Christmas, that you enjoyed yourselves, that you enjoyed your family, that you got everything that you wanted for Christmas. I praise God that he kept us more than anything. I praise God that he kept us safe from all harm and danger. Amen. That is a blessing. <clears throat> I am, I am grateful to the Lord. I say that a lot because I really am really grateful to the Lord for his manifold blessings. God has blessed us this year. He has been so great and marvelous and wonderful to all of us. He has kept all of us and I am grateful to him. As I, as I retrospect on, on the year this past week, and I think about all that has happened, and it's, I'm not going to go into all that has happened this year because I, could, I probably would still be talking to you until tonight, late in the night, because of all the things that has happened, but I, I would like to just make reference to how God has kept us. I think of the, the COVID-19 and how it's, it's sweeping or it has swept for the last nine months or so through the world. It's not just something that is local. It's something that has affected our world and um, so many things I think about the school's cancellation and the closure of the school. I think about the masking up and the, the, the social distancing. I think about our church service. We're not able to go in the church. And I want you to know that I thank God for technology, for allowing us a, a way to, to, to Go on Zoom, go on the phones and have service. It's, it's a blessing. God has been good to us. He provides, he always provides a way of escape. And this is a way of escape for us to just come together in a different way, but we are together. And actually I can feel his presence as we gather on social media to have service. And for that, I am most grateful. I think about, about I, I like nature and I, I love trees. I love, I love the wild animals. I like nature. And, and I, I thought about in Australia, they had a, a fire that it was declared a disaster. And they say over 500 million animals died in the brush fire in Australia. And um, that, that is, that to me, because I like nature, that is sad, amen. But then I think about the 300,000 that died in the United States alone from this virus. Just so many things has happened, but God, but God. And every day you hear 
about something new happening. Just this past week, I heard that a lot of countries have closed their borders to the UK, even Jamaica will not allow any flights in from the UK because of the new strand of, of virus that has come in. I, I think about the blood moon. The, the, the moon shall turn into blood. I think about the blood rivers. I got several WhatsApp text from Jamaica where the, the waters have turned red. They just out, they wake up one morning and the, the, the streams and the rivers and everything was red as blood and people were standing there to, to look and in astonishment as to what is this? What is this that's happening in the world? And I just want to say it all points to the fulfillment of the word. It's the fulfillment of the word. Everything points to the coming of the Lord. And um, the church as we know it is experiencing a great falling away. Men and women would rather hear a lie than the truth. You say, Pastor, you're being negative today. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I am just reminding you that it's time to look up. And I could go on and on and on and on because so many other things has happened. I heard this morning someone say that the government, this government system, is um is is we need to pray for our government because they are they're they're having some issues so we need to pray for the government amen and and it's time to look up i am trying to make you aware of the times i'm not being negative we need somebody to wake us up just like god has awakened me to look up and to to help you to recognize that that jesus is on his way but i want to encourage you this morning with all that i have said already i would like to encourage you and let you know without a doubt it doesn't matter what happens it doesn't matter what goes haywire what doesn't matter what what the world situation is it doesn't matter what the government do it doesn't matter how many man-made viruses they make and put out in the air so we can be sick and 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 and, and um dying 300,000 Americans have died from this virus. But guess what? I might remind you this morning that nobody that comes to Greater Light Church and Ministry has contracted the, the virus to the point of death. I want to remind you that even those who have been exposed to it, God, hallelujah, we read Psalm 91 and we are covered and we take it seriously. And God has protected us. We are anchored in Jesus. The storms of life may be brave because we are anchored in Jesus. We're anchored in the rock of ages. Thank you, Jesus. I give God praise this morning because he is good to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can you praise him with me for a moment? Can you praise God with me for a moment that he has kept us through many dangers, toils, and snares? He has kept you. He has kept your families. Hallelujah. We have had 
loved ones to go home in this period of time, but none of them were, to my knowledge, has gone home because of the virus. Because when it first started, we started reading, we've been reading Psalm 91 for years, but we doubled up on it when the virus came in and God has allowed us to be covered and he has kept us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the scripture that I'm going to read this morning is taken from Psalm 23 and verse four. It reads, yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am glad this morning that though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death. He protects us. We, have, we don't have to fear any evil. And I want to read to you something about the valley and the shadow of death that we've been reading about in Psalm 23 and verse four. There is an actual valley paralleled to the Jordan River to the south of Jericho in the Judean hills. In an area that is more commonly referred to as Ju Judean desert or wilderness. The temperature often reaches above 104 degrees. It is easy to see the name could have originated from the extreme climate, but it appears the term may have actually come from the reputation of the valley for being a place of danger for travelers seeking to make a shortcut on the road between Jerusalem and Jericho. That is actually when the psalmist made reference to the valley and the shadow of death. It is a place of danger where people would try to to, to go from, from Jerusalem to Jericho and would suffer from people lurking there to accost them and, 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 and hurt them. Amen. And I thought about that. And I think sometimes we feel like we are walking through a valley of death, trapped. Sometimes it seems like we're walking through a place of danger. But my Bible tells me, even though I am walking through the valley and the shadow of death, I don't have to fear any evil because my God is walking with me all the time. I don't care what comes on the land. I don't care how dangerous situations become. I don't have to fear because God has not given me the spirit of fear. In 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, it reads, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and of love 
man of a sound mind. And my Bible tells me also in 1 John 4, 18, that perfect love casteth out all fear. There is no fear in God. Hallelujah. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. The scripture says in Romans, in Philippians 2 verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And if the mind of Christ dwells in us, then we have sound mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For God is with us. Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou art with me. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13, 5. God will never leave us nor forsake us. We don't have to fear. We don't have to be despondent. We don't have to worry. We don't have to worry about COVID-19. We don't have to worry about what the government does because we are just pilgrims. We are passing through. We don't belong here. We're just passing through. There's a little song that we used to sing when I was a little girl. I'm just a stranger here. I'm going home. Someday I'll take my flight. Hallelujah. When the trump of God sounds and the dead in Christ shall rise and mortals shall put on immortality, I'm going home. We're going home, saints. I'll take my flight. We'll take our flight for home, sweet home. Thank you, Jesus. Thy rod and thy staff, while I'm going through and while they're dangerous, toils and slayers, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I heard testimonies this morning about the comforting, loving care of our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. The rod is a weapon of defense. His rod, hallelujah, is a weapon of defense and it symbolizes God's strength hallelujah God's strength and his power and his authority and if we are saved and sanctified and walking with Jesus we have that same strength and power and the authority of God lives in us so we are strong. The staff is a long slender stick with a hook on the end to draw the sheep close to the shepherd. Hallelujah. Thy rod and thy staff, when we, we feel like we're alone and when we feel despondent and when we feel like we can't make it, then he draws us close to him. And he takes care of us. He comforts us. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And I can rely on his strength and power. I can rely on him. I can depend on him to keep me. We can depend on him to keep us. We can depend on him to keep us. I'm going to say it again. We can depend on him to keep us in the time of trouble, in the time of sickness, in the time of COVID-19. He protects us. He protects us. His strength, his power, his comfort. Hallelujah. Because we know that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. It won't work. No weapon. I know 
don't care what it looks like. I don't care what situation you're going through. I don't care what your circumstances are. It cannot prosper. I just feel in my spirit to encourage somebody this morning that we serve a God that is powerful. We serve a God that protects us. We serve a God that keeps us from all evil. No weapon, no weapon. You trust him? Do we trust him today? Do we trust his word? He says in his word, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. It cannot prosper. It cannot have any effect on you. He is our refuge and strength. I'm going to read it for you. God is our refuge and strength. Thank you, Jesus. He's our refuge and strength. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength. a very present help in trouble. Listen to it with your spirit. Therefore will we not fear. There's no fear in God because he's our refuge and strength. Therefore will we not fear, though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the most high. God is in the midst of her. God is in the midst of you. God is in the midst of us. She shall not be moved. You cannot be moved. God shall help her. And that right early, the heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melteth. When God speaks, everything comes to a standstill. His majesty and his power will cause the earth to melt before anything happens to you that the enemy brings against you if you are trusting him. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. You can hide in him. He's a refuge. He protects us. Come behold the works of the Lord, what desolation he had made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariots in the fire. Be still. We need to take a breath and be still and recognize and know that God is God and he is our God. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Our God is a great God. 
The Lord of hosts is with us, greater light. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. He is our refuge. We can hide in him. We can trust him. A very present help. A very present help in trouble. He is present. He is right here with us, for us. He is right there with me. You can take it personal. He is with me always. He is with me. He's not gone on a journey. He's not out somewhere. He's present in our lives. He's present in our presence. He lives in us. He rules in us. He has his being in us. He is a present help. All we have to do is call Jesus. I'll say it again. I've said it before. Sometimes we forget to call him by his name. We call Jesus. He's right there. He's always right there with me. He's always right there with you. When Elijah needed him to answer, when Elijah needed him to answer by fire, he was right there. When you need him to answer in your situation, if you don't feel well and your body is rocked in pain and you call on him, he is right there. If you're running short financially and you call on him, he will make a way. My sister told me a story of one of the saints in Jamaica and how likely it is for you to find money in the street in Jamaica. And she said she called one of her students and she called her right on time and she was going through a situation in her home and she walked out of her door and went for a walk and she was so upset that she walked a long ways. This just happened a couple of days ago. She walked a long ways and it was, it was far and it was late at night and she needed to take a taxi home. But when she walked out of her door, she left everything behind. She didn't have any money. And she turned back to go back home. And then she looked around. I don't know, it was night, but she found a thousand dollar bill laying in the ground, on the ground in the street. God provided a way for her to take a taxi home. Hallelujah. You don't tell me what my God can do. Don't tell me what my God can't do. Hallelujah. He can provide for us. He caused the raven to carry food to Elijah. He is right there for you. The Hebrew boys would not bow and they turned up the furnace seven times. Turn that fire up. You know what they said? Even if he doesn't deliver us, he can. Do you believe that this morning? Do you have trust in him this morning? They didn't care. Even if he doesn't do it. Our God still can. 
You have to get a don't care attitude, a so what attitude. So what if he doesn't deliver me? So what? Even if he doesn't deliver me, he still can. So I'm still going to trust him. So he can. So it didn't make them any, any difference. They were not going to bow. When situations come in your life, comes in our life, are you going to say, even if he doesn't deliver me, I know he can, so I'm still going to trust him? Can you get a so what attitude this morning? Just because he can? Our God can do anything. He can shut the mouth of the lions. Daniel went in the lion's den and they were hungry and they lay down and he went and took a nap in the locks of their shoulder. We have to know assuredly that God can calm the storm. We have to know assuredly that no matter what comes in on the land, our God is in charge and he can keep us. Fear has gripped the land. Christians are fearful. Hallelujah. But we must come to the place in God that we know without a doubt that he can. Even if he doesn't, we are not going to bow because he can. That doesn't, that doesn't make him not God. That doesn't take away his power because he, he wants us to, to go through something and prove to the world that he's God and he's got some people that, can, that are trusting him. Sometimes God uses us as example to let somebody know that my God is great and I am going to trust him no matter what. No matter how the storm is raging, no matter what the situation is, no matter the sickness, no matter the lack of whatever we think we need, we've got to prove to somebody that my God is greater than any trouble. He's greater than any trial. He's greater than any situation. And I will prove to the world because I will praise him in the midst of the storm cloud. Because if he doesn't calm the storm, he gives peace in the midst of the storm. He gives peace in the midst of the storm. The time is coming when we are going to have to endure a storm, but I want you to know that he gives peace. <laughs> if he doesn't calm the storm, he gives peace in the midst of the storm. The storm is raging, the breeze is blowing, but you can't feel it. It has no effect on you because you're trusting. The fire didn't have any effect on the Hebrew boys because guess what? The fourth one, hallelujah, God will get in the fire. The storm may be raging, the fire may be hot. The breeze may be blowing, the trees, the limbs may be blowing off, the roof of the house 
in your situation may be blown off, but you can stand because he gives you peace in the midst of the storm. If he doesn't calm the raging storm, he gives peace. I know from experience. He gives peace and you wonder to yourself. He'll make you wonder to yourself how in the world I'm going through all of this and I'm still calm and trusting and praising and giving him thanks and praise because you trust him and you know that he will carry you through. If you are in a storm this morning, if you find like you're walking through a, a dry place, he is there. He is there with you. There's no need to worry. There's no need to be fearful because God has not given us the spirit of fear. Don't be fearful. Don't be fearful. The Lord of hosts is with you. The God of Jacob is your refuge. Hallelujah. Stand. Stand for Jesus. Stand. Having done all to stand, all, all you can do, all you can do. Having done all to stand, stand. Be assured that God is standing with you. Hallelujah. God is standing with you. His protection, his care stands with you. He has brought us to the end of 2020 with all its challenges, with all the situation, all the things that we were exposed to, all the trials, all that we've gone through, all that we've gone through, all that we've gone through, challenges, 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 but he has kept us because no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. He didn't say the weapons were not going to be formed. He said, if there's a weapon that is formed against you, it cannot prosper. It can't prosper. 2020 was challenging to say the least. But he has kept us. Now what we do is praise him. Hallelujah. Let's give him praise, greater light, for keeping us. Let's glorify his matchless name. Let's lift him up. No complaints. We have no reason to complain because he's been good. Thank you, Jesus. I give him thanks this morning. I give him praise this morning because he has been good to us. None of us went to bed hungry, even when the grocery shelves were empty. <laughs> even when we couldn't have toilet paper. Hallelujah. Some states, some cities didn't have toilet paper. I know God provided toilet paper for the people who didn't have any in their city. They couldn't find it in the store. God provided even toilet paper. 
You tell me God is not good. You tell me he's not a provider. You tell me he can't take care of us. He provides for us. He gives us victory. Hallelujah. We cannot help but serve him and give him praise. Give him praise. I'm imploring you to give him praise for keeping us, for standing with us, for watching over us, hallelujah, for protecting us, for giving us peace in the midst of the storm. Don't need to worry. Don't need to fret. Our God is the God of gods and he takes care of us. We are the apple of his eye. And though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, remember we're walking through we are not taking a boat in our situations because God is going to bring us through whatever situation that we face. We can have confidence in that. He is going to take us through the valley. In the valley, he restoreth my soul. Hallelujah. Though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Everybody say to themselves, say it with me, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why I will fear no evil? For thou, God, hallelujah, you, God, is in the valley with us. You're going to take us through just like you did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You got in the fire with them and not even the smell of smoke. not even the smell of smoke, not even a touch of the virus, for thou art with me, for thou God art with me, and thy rod, thy powerful protection, thy anointing, thy wonderful work in power, thy rod. Beat the devil off of us. The rod protects us. The anointing, the power of God. The healing virtue of God protects us and thy staff draws us closer to you so we can feel your presence, so we can feel your anointing, so we can feel your comfort, so we can feel you when what we pray for one another and we feel the prayers of the saints, the Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Hallelujah. His staff draws us to him and he enfolds us in his bosom and he comforts us. They comfort me. I thank God today that when the enemy would come in like a flood, the spirit of almighty God will lift up a standard against him. 
and no weapon that he tries to form against us shall prosper. And when he tries to form the weapon, God comforts us, comforts us and protects us from all evil. I am grateful to our God today that he protects us. He keeps us. He watches over us. There is no need to fear. We can hope in the Lord and we can take comfort knowing that our God is capable of keeping us through whatever situation arises. Our God will provide for us. He will keep us. God bless you today. As you continue to trust him, as you continue to lean on him, as you continue to seek after him, as he continues to be your God. And we thank him today for his wondrous working power. We thank him today that we know him in the pardon of our sins. Hallelujah. I pray this morning that God in heaven, the God of heaven and earth, will continue to strengthen and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. And if you're having a storm this morning, just call on him. He'll hear you. If you call him, he'll not only hear you, but he will answer. Thank you, Jesus. Call on him. He will be your refuge and your strength, a very present help, the psalmist says a very present help in time of trouble. God bless you. God, I ask you this morning to strengthen your people. Help us to take courage in your word. Help us to take courage, Lord, in your word. Help us to know that your word is you and you're talking to us. And if we trust your word, Jesus, if we trust your word, if your word become life in us, if we read it and take it into our spirit, it will become life in us and it will give us life. Hallelujah. Your word is life. Thank you, Jesus. Take courage. Take comfort. Take strength from God's word. He will keep you. He will keep you today. He will heal you if you're sick. He will heal you. If you're broke, he will give you monies to pay your bill. If you have to be like my sister's student, God will provide for you if he have to make you walk down the street and find it on the street. He will provide for you. He has blessed us. Those of us who are enjoying the blessings of the Lord, give him thanks for it. And there is more to come. Just don't forget about Jesus. Don't forget the Lord. Keep him at the forefront 
and I want to share with those of you who are being blessed. Enjoy your blessing. I must say that. I feel it in my spirit. Enjoy your blessing. Don't hoard it. Enjoy it. Jesus is coming. He's blessing you so you can enjoy life before he comes. You say, oh, mom, I've got to have something for rainy day. Well, you know, I'm just saying to you, enjoy your blessing. That's why he's blessing you so you can enjoy it and give him praise while you are enjoying it. God, you've blessed me because I've been faithful to you. And let me encourage some of you. God rewards faithfulness. A footnote to my sermon. God rewards faithfulness. If you are faithful to him, if you trust him, if you put him first, guess what? He will put you first. And the world will see that he will put you first. God rewards faithfulness. Those of you who have heard me say it throughout the years and you remain faithful to him, he, you are a testimony that it's true. You can't be God's given, the songwriter said. I don't know why I'm going here, but God is leading me here, so I'm going. You can't be God's given, no matter how you try. The more you give, the more he'll give to you. Just keep on giving because his word is true. Give up your time. Give up yourself. Read your Bible. Pray. Worship him. Praise him. Give him glory. The more you give him, the more he'll give you. The more praise, the more anointing. The more word, the stronger. He gives every capacity he fills everything. Give him your all and he will give you his all. God bless you today. God bless you today. I pray to God that you were strengthened and encouraged today. Just keep giving to Jesus. He will put you first. You put him first. He put you first. Try it. You try it. And you will say, Pastor, you were right. I give, I put you first. I have started what the song says before I minister. I have decided to follow Jesus. Lord, and I am going to put you first. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back. You can have this whole world. Just give me Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you today. I love you with the love of the Lord. I not only love you with the love of the Lord. God is love and he lives in me. So I love you. But personally, as a human being, I love you unconditionally. Joyce loves you. God loves you. But Joyce also loves you. God bless you today as we strive to please him. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.